So mine, if I simulate it just to see what it looks like again, to remind myself, I, I'm running the project, um, getting the feedback that I'm signed in. I can then, uh, I've got a comic, at least one comic. I can click the little speech bubble that pops up. I'm showing all of the uh, output right here, or I could show it in the browser. So I've got one comic so far. I wanted to edit that and say, well, actually, that was 1938. So that's at the point where we're about to set that up, where we actually update it, and that will change. At the moment, it does see that we're trying to change the information. So we're very close to actually changing it. We're going to see that with pouch in order for us to change something in the database. We have to refer uh, to it with a new revision number, so a new um, version of the data. I've got version 1 saved so far. I want to save version 2 with a new change, new year or whatever. So we're going to see we're going to use db.put again, but then we have to supply a new field a uh, revision field. We'll see that right now. Is that just specific to that database? Yeah, to PouchDB, that's the way that works, but it does rely... That's very common in non-SQL type of databases, to have a revision number to keep track of what version of the data. So if we get back to our JavaScript... Uh, let's see, index.js. Let's go to the very end of our code where we last ended up at. In my case, on line 507 or so, that's where I say, OK, console output to show the old data or what's currently there. Well, lines 500 to 505 is where I'm checking what is in those fields what's in the in title edit, in number edit, and so forth. That's that pop-up that we get that says, here's what the data currently is. Would you like to change it? So we capture the value of all of those fields so we can use it. And then I did a little console output there to see what was there. Based on that information, plus one more that we will supply, we will make an update to the data. OK, so after our console output, we have to do the usual, which is to check, does the data exist? Great, it exists. Let's change it. Checking that it exists is db.get. So we need to check, is that Superman comic in question, does it exist? Let's get, let's see if it exists. If it doesn't exist, we deal with the uh, problems. If it does exist, then it's time to replace db.get, and we're using again temp comic to delete. That's uh, in retrospect, we should have called it temp comic in question. That's the comic in question this whole time. This is the comic I'm looking at. This is the comic I'm uh, about to delete, or this is the comic that I'm about to edit. So we could have a better name, and maybe at some point we could do a replace for that. But temp comic to delete is the one in question get. As usual, we have the callback function. We have the syntax of saying there was either a failure or a success. And as usual, that's going to be an if-else result. So writing my notes here, end of dot get to check if comic exists, which results in an if else. And that's if failure. In the failure block, we can have some console output to try to troubleshoot what's happening. Why are we getting this failure? 
we're, we're definitely going to have, or most likely you are definitely going to have issues where something went wrong and then Pouch is giving back some sort of error message. Well, obviously, if I'm not here to come and help you out, how are you going to figure out that that Pouch error, what, what is it? How are you going to figure it out? Documentation. Exactly. We go to pouchdb.com and look up what is error 406. Maybe we never encountered error 406 in class. But that's what the documentation is for. I think people lose track of that sometimes. jQuery.com tells you every gory detail of jQuery. PouchDB.com tells you every gory detail of Pouch. jQuerymobile.com, JavaScript.com.org, whatever it is. These websites, they give you all the gory details about what you're working with. So if you have nothing better to do, you know, curl up by the fireplace, nice glass of wine, pull up your tablet and go read PouchDB.com or jQuery.com, or maybe pull it out at the dinner table and you know, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming up and say, uh, I have a story to tell all of you. It's the story of PouchDB. <laughs> you have a problem sleeping, yeah, a great cure for insomnia. So read up a little bit on the documentation of all of this stuff. It's there for us to succeed because that explains the whole thing. So what I'm getting at here is we will just do a little console output to say there was some sort of failure for us to figure out. Let's say simply error. And just output that object, have pouch itself tell me there's something going on here. And that'll give me some object for me to look at uh, what went wrong. And then I go look it up or double check my spelling or something, troubleshooting it. As we've gone throughout the whole course, oftentimes I'm very verbose with all of this console output. I want to write a lot. Because if you, as you do this on your own and you're figuring it out on your own and I'm trying to accomplish this, giving yourself these outputs, these console logs as often as possible with some sort of meaningful message it's very invaluable for you to hopefully figure out what happened. If I simply call this error, in the context of seeing dozens of lines of output here, I'm going to lose track of, OK, another error, but when and why? So that's why I'm often pretty verbose in saying error in getting the comic. Simply saying error plus what was the failure object could help me. But perhaps being a little bit more explicit like this and saying, well, this was an error trying to get the comic plus the failure object. OK, so if there's always failure or success, we move on to else, which means success. We did get the comic in question. It does exist in the database. So what we're trying to do is then, under else, replace the old comic data with the new comic data. And that's db.put. We used db.put the first time to save the data the first time. But we also use it to replace data with one little change. I'm going to put curly braces right there and then comma function, error, or failure, success, as usual. So I'll come back to this in one moment. But this is the usual, the, the name we've been using over and over of our database, the method put. We're putting something a little different. Let me get back the failure and success. And we'll do failure and success in just a moment. Well, one of the first times, or the first time, that we did db.put, it looked like this. Way back on line 280, you know, way back a long time ago, line 280, we did db.put a comic. Well, a comic is data that was bundled together in JavaScript object notation. If you, just to show you here, if I hover over that object, Visual Studio tells me, well, this was a comic 
which had an ID, a title, a number, a year, publisher, notes, and unique ID. So that was a bundle of data, which came from up here, line 253, 10th comic, uh, the underscore ID required field, and all the other fields that we invented. So all of this is in curly brackets, in object notation. So what we're doing, what we're about to do right now is write it in object notation to replace these fields, because those are the latest fields that we asked for right here. I've got those curly braces because I'm going to reinsert into the database uh, the data again. I'm going to split this curly brace, multiple lines, and I'm going to set up those fields again. ID, underscore ID, title, <coughs> number, year, publisher, notes, barcode, so those are all the original fields that we created when, uh, when we first saved our data, except for barcode, we haven't gotten to that one, we'll probably get to it today, I'm going to set it up so that we can scan barcodes and all that other cool stuff. But this bundle of data is made out of underscore ID plus all the other fields we invented. No, we're just going to capture what they've typed in so far because we assume that this is the data of the comic that they want to edit. But yeah, it would be better to add extra, no special characters, and strip out all that stuff. Sure. So this looks exactly the same as before, but we have one new field that we use when we um, do an update. So quotes underscore rev. This is a required one. It's a reserved one. It's built into pouch DB that this is what keeps track of revisions to our data. Notice the spelling of it, of course. Underscore REV, revision. Underscore ID is also one of these ones that is uh, reserved. We, we have to use that one as the unique identifier for this piece of data. We have to then use rev revision to show this is version 2, or 3, or 300. So what these fields are going to be filled with are success.id, comma, oops, success underscore id, careful there. So success is the success object up here of trying to get the data. Uh, doing a get and we get success says, yeah, we got the data, here's the data, here's the comic. So success dot underscore ID represents the comic that we're trying to change. That should be the same because we're dealing with this comic. We're dealing with Superman number one. I'm not suddenly dealing with Superman number 12. I'm dealing with Superman number one, this comic in question, which is basically represented here. What's going to change are these various fields here, even if they, even if they didn't change them. So val, dollar $val, in, title, edit, comma. This is what this is what's in that edit box that they either changed or not. That's what's going to be put back into title when we db.put. 
Same thing for the next ones. Val in number edit comma. Because we have the first key and value pair of the JSON object, the JavaScript object here, comma. We have another key and value pair, comma, key and value, comma, all the way down to the last one, which does not have a final comma. These, are, these are, should be obvious what to fill in. I'll do them in a moment. That's a new one that we'll do in just a moment. Val in year, edit, comma, val in publisher, edit, comma, val in notes, edit, comma, barcode, comma. We'll do rev in just a moment, but I'm going to add a comment before my db.put. After confirming the comic in question exists, the insert into the database with new or same data plus a revision. So if the person never changed the year of the comic, they will just go back in. 1938. If they did change the year, 1939, it'll go in as the new year, provided we have this final field, which is success dot underscore rev. This is something automatic. This is something that Pouch gives us back that shows us. This is the ID we're working with. This is the current version 1 you take care of it automatically to put version 2. And the next time, if I edit the same comic, it'll go through this whole sequence, and it'll say, OK, we were just dealing with version 2. We're providing version 2, so <coughs> PouchDB, you turn it into version 3. And it just does either failure or success. So here we're writing it longhand in that here's the ID field, the title field, the number field. Whereas the first time db.put, we just said db.put a comic. Well, a comic was based on all of that data put together uh, in an object, in object syntax. So we can note, make sure to use success dot underscore rev. That's basically, that's that's the secret. That's the answer. You, you have to provide a rev field plus the current revision so that it can increment a new version of the data. If we don't provide that rev field, it'll definitely give us back a failure. And the failure will say something like missing rev attribute or, or property. So we definitely need that. So all of that, I broke apart into multiple lines for readability. But all of that was that same first argument in db.put, in the first item, comma, and then the callback function. All right, we've got a callback function. We're going to do what we usually do. If else, failure, blah, 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 deal with that. So I'm going to break apart that curly brace. Let's see, we can write some, some notes here.
this curly brace ends our if else if failure we can say end if else of db.get and then this pair here is our closing for db.put that closing parenthesis, parenthesis is of db.put if you follow it back remember uh, you can uh, click on um, a a, per, a pair, and it should show you its other pair as well up there somewhere. Oops, where did I go? Oh, here it is. So that's the end of dot put. So because we've got the usual here, here we've got uh, if else. This is and if else. So again, this is the verbosity that I talk about. This is obviously totally optional. But when you see something like this out of context, all these curly braces and parentheses and such, and you don't have these notes here, it's very easy to lose track of where does that curly brace go? What does it do? What is it closing? What is it opening, etc. So yeah, it's a lot of extra little typing, but it might be helpful to keep track of it. Yeah, if we're looking at too much, we can go over to the side here and then say, well, I don't want to see this at the moment, and then you can collapse it. Although it's easy to forget we collapse things, and then I'm suddenly, where did my code go? <laughs> Oops, not if else. Uh, if failure. As the usual here, we will have just some simple console output to try to figure out why was there a failure. Console log. Uh, error uh, updating the comic. Plus failure. We can we can give ourselves also the positive console log output here, saying success updating the comic. And what was that success object? So this is another example of when we deleted a comic. We had the button delete. And behind the scenes, db.remove removes the data. But to the user, unless we programmed that the user would not know, it worked because the, there's no user feedback after that db.remove. 
Same sort of thing here. There's no user feedback of db.put that we've successfully updated the comic. So what we need to do is refresh some things on screen for the user. Well, the table, of course, because now we've changed information. Maybe I had misspelled Superman. So definitely I want that to be replaced and updated in the table. And the screen where, I'm, where I've got those fields that shows me all of the information of the comic, that's need to be up, that needs to be updated too, because that screen is still there. Remember, we click on the bubble, we get a screen about here's your info, then we have uh, delete or edit. So if we do edit, that should bring us back to the screen where it says, well, here's all your information about your comic. So that's got to be updated. So this else part here is going to do all of that. It's going to refresh some several things on screen. We're going to use the same sort of uh, idea that we used previously where we had this. I won't copy and paste it yet, uh, but something like this, where we, where we showed the original information on the fourth paragraph of that div. So we need to do something like that again. It is a lot of typing, so maybe we'll save ourselves some effort and copy and paste. Let's back up to where we were somewhere around line 420 or so, 420, somewhere around there, where you've got all of those div view comic info p equals and such. Basically reusing that, because now we've got new data to show. So it won't be copied and pasted exactly. But I think it's going to be useful here if you do copy this chunk. Because we need to say, in the div of view comics, there is a paragraph, number one, where we need to display name. Well, name of the updated comic, if we updated it. There is a div, view comics, paragraph number four. Publisher. We did change the publisher, so we have the new version of the publisher. Copy that chunk somewhere in db.get, line 420, somewhere around there. And I'm pasting it in this else that we're dealing with right now. won't work as is. We need to tweak a little thing. But this is what I'm, I'm saying, that if we successfully put the new data, well, we need to redraw, refresh, re, you know, change what was visible to the user with new information. And that new information is the, the latest value here of val in title edit. All of these success dot whatevers, these are all going to be val in title edit, val in number edit. Right, the sequence of what the what each of those paragraphs is supposed to show. First paragraph shows the title of the comic. Second paragraph shows the number of the comic. Third paragraph shows the year of the comic. Fourth paragraph is the publisher of the comic. Fifth paragraph is the notes. And the sixth paragraph is the barcode. Oh, 
All of this is happening in the else, the success condition of db.put. Because internally in the database it changed. That's it. But externally or for the front end, for the users, we need to show this is the new information. Even if they didn't change it, I still am putting back Superman into the title if they never changed it to show them that it's the comic that we were working with. Next line. We need to close the dialog box that is currently on screen. So we have the View Comics screen. We click the bubble, we get another screen. That's the info screen. We click the edit button, that's another screen. The, the actual edit screen. So we need to close that one, the edit screen, to take us back to the view info screen. That's what we're seeing here. So the one that's popped up currently is uh, pop edit comic info. Yeah, so it's uh, pound, pop, edit comic info. That's the screen that's currently visible to us, which is the screen where we're filling in to make changes to the comic. We're saying that's a dialogue that we want to close. And lastly, we also need to refresh the table. We had seven comics saved, and we just changed one of the comics. We need to update on the table. So next line after that, function show comic prep. Those are the things we're doing in else. We are repopulating those fields. We are closing the current edit dialog box. We're redrawing the table with the latest information. <coughs> we should be able to save it and test it and see how it's working at this point. Give that a shot. Check your error list before publishing, perhaps, or before running. Then run it. and to test it a little bit and try to do that. Try to change. Make sure you have at least one comic saved. And try to go in and, and, and change some of those fields and click that edit button. See if it works. If not, we'll, we'll pause to, to check. Let me check mine. And then we'll confirm that we're on the right track. Let's see, I'm going to close my console, or I'm going to clean out my console, uh, view comic, I've got one comic, click the box, okay, I actually meant that that was uh, 1938, so I'm going to go to edit, change that to 1938, click update, so that edit box closed itself, because I edited it, it took me back to here with the change, 1938, if I close this, Nothing really changed here because it's Superman number one. But if I wanted here for full testing, let's say I have comic 
you know, ZZZ number one from 1911, whatever. Let's say I put whatever gibberish. Save that. That can be fully edited here. Comic ZZZ. Okay, I'm going to actually, I meant edit Comic Z number one from 1991, publisher uh, 243 Media. So I'm making changes to all of these fields. I guess the barcode too. Yeah, I scanned the barcode. We'll get to that update. So all of that that a moment ago was easy easy gibberish should update. And then when I close it, back to the table, comic ZZZ is comic Z. So let's pause there just to confirm it works. And then we'll go on. here uh, if anyone needs a little help call me over and we'll make sure that works
So we're seeing here that um, this whole edit system seems to work as it's as it's expected. 